Last week, we talked about academic vocabulary, and we talked about how to choose words. You may choose words using the tiered approach. Remember to focus on the tier two words, or tier three if you are teaching in a content area. And we also talked about the SWIT away, the SWIT approach to choosing words. So this week, we're assuming that the words that you want to teach have already been chosen. So we're going to talk about how to teach those words. Academic vocabulary needs to be taught both intentionally and incidentally. Remember, each word, each new word to a student needs 10 to 15 exposures before this word will be established in their vocabulary. So when you pick out a word, and you're teaching intentionally, you're going to want to point out that vocabulary word before reading. During reading, you're going to want to come up with a student-friendly definition. And after reading, you're going to want to continue to highlight that word so it will become established in your student's vocabulary. Here are the different levels of acquisition. Again, we're aiming for the word to become established. It's very familiar. The student can immediately recognize its meaning and use the word correctly. Now, that doesn't mean that they can spell the word correctly. That's a whole nother type of lesson or a whole nother objective. This is understanding what it means, using inventive spelling to use it in their writing, and even using it, using it in conversation. Before reading, when you're doing a read aloud, you're going to want to do a word walk through the book, pointing out text features if it's an informational book as you're going, pointing out um, pictures, graphs, drawings. When you see the word in content, you're going to want to point it out, maybe take a guess on what it means from the illustrations or from your word walk. I'm kind of use those words to predict what the selection might be about. Here's an idea. Um, use a word cloud with the words that you'd like to teach and see if they can find those words as you're reading or as they're reading on their own. Use the word cloud for predicting the meaning of the passage that you're going to read. Before reading, you could scramble the words this probably would be more for intermediate. But you could scramble the new words um, and see if they can unscramble the words and figure out what they mean. You may want to give them a theme or a focus before they try to unscramble them. Use an anticipation guide. Give them the vocabulary they're going to focus on and have them fill this out before they read. Never heard of it have heard of it but not do not understand and I already can explain that. This is a great guide for you to know how much time and how explicitly to teach each word. Here's another graphic organizer. Um, so you fill in the vocabulary words and they take a guess before reading at the meaning of the words and after reading add any other information or any um, more meaning that they gained from the passage. As you're reading in first student de friendly definitions of the word when you come across it in the text. Look at the word parts, roots or affixes. Whenever possible, connect that word to student background or student schema. Think of a synonym or antonym for each word. And use the word in a different context or a different sentence. Now you aren't going to want to stop and do all of these things. These are just ideas as you're going through. Take some time for students to think, pair, and share. Remember, co-construction of knowledge um, instills knowledge in a student. Cements that word in their, in their mind. Here is um, Padlet. This is a free site and students can add to this site if you give them the URL. 
um, whatever it is you're using it for. Now in this particular example, I am using this for a word collector. So as students are reading, they can collect their own words and add it to this site. Or possibly um, you could have students writing down their student definitions of words that you have already chosen. But as they add to the site, all students at a time can continue to add. This is called Padlet. Um, think about um, the different ways that you could use that, not only in literacy block, but in other subjects as well. And I'll try to uh, focus on this um, a little bit more so that you have a chance um, to, to go back and experiment with Padlet. After reading, make sure you have a word-rich environment. I guess that would be before and after. Uh, reading. But have word walls. You might have content area word walls. You may have tier two word walls, word collectors, um, but make sure you're displaying those words. Those are going to remind students of the words and they're going to remind you as a teacher to bring those words back into play in your conversation. Promote word play. Use graphic organizers to help organize thoughts. Organize student-friendly definitions. If you have those words displayed in the environment, use those words in writing. Foster that word consciousness. Model using the word in your um, directions or whenever appropriate. Reward students for using the words. Maybe just putting a tally mark next to the word so they can see how many times they've actually used it, whether they're using it in conversation or using the word in writing. Here's an example of print rich environment. It doesn't look like much, but these students started collecting tier two words. They started on a bulletin board and ran out of room. So now they've gone toward the cupboards and their goal is to, to cover all of the cupboards and start on the door. Here is an example of a tiered word wall in a primary classroom, focusing on tier two words. Tier three has that strawberry on the cupcake, so there are little extra words that you probably don't use all the time, but we'll use in a content area. And tier one words are simply um, high frequency words. Um, and again, don't need to be focused at on. Here's another example of a word wall. And this is from um, high school. These particular teachers across different content areas are focusing on a word each day. And they actually took the words and put it into a Google Doc and they're having a conversation as they go through and use the words to talk about how they're going to use them and I noticed that they're even using the words in their conversation so they're having fun with the words as well. But the idea is they're not only seeing this word in their literacy or English classes, they're seeing it in social studies, possibly at math, science, whenever they can work that word in. Again, 10 to 15 exposures will help cement that word. Here's an example of a tiered lesson on SmartBoard. So um, after reading a selection, student went through, students went through and chose which words are the tier two words. And they put it in the tier two pumpkin. Now a teacher that I knew um, continued this and had a different theme for every month. And then every month after the words were put into their tiered category, she would print this off and put it into the students' journals so that they continue to use those tier, tier two words. This can also be used at secondary level. Take a look here, see which words you can pick out as being tier two. Which words would you pick out as tier three? Then that would be used probably only in a content area. And again, which words are tier one that do not need any explanation? Students already know what they mean. This is another example of a teacher who is teaching Greek and Latin roots. So she had her students uh, put together PowerPoints teaching the Greek or the Latin root and shared those PowerPoints with the classroom. Here's an example of um, the Frere model of teaching vocabulary. So the vocabulary goes in the middle and then you're using that vocabulary word in different ways um, to help cement meaning. So you've got defining the term in your own words, 
three interesting facts about the term, give a synonym, give an antonym. Again, remember, none of these ideas are actually going to a dictionary and looking that word up. They're student-friendly definitions. They're used playfully so that learning is cemented. The website I've listed down below um, will bring you to a site where you can design your own fair model vocabulary worksheet. Younger grades may want to use foldables for new academic vocabulary. Playing with words, put those words into a Jeopardy game. Great review, fun for students, authentic reason to want to remember what the meaning is. The average student learns about 3,000 words per year. If words are taught at a rate of 8 to 10 per week, students will learn 300 to 500 words per year. And these are words that we as teachers can teach explicitly. But if they're learning 3,000 words, how else are they gaining knowledge about new words? Well, that would be through wide, independent reading. Academic vocabulary instruction will help close the gap. So the more minutes a day that you read, the more words that you're exposed to. For example, if a student is reading approximately an hour a day, they're going to be exposed to more than 4 million words. Give your students opportunities to read in the classroom. Encourage them to be reading at home. Incidental vocabulary learning occurs all the time when we read. Based on how a way a word is used in text, we're able to determine its meaning. Model this sort of incidental vocabulary learning for students to help them develop their own word consciousness. You can model this through read-alouds. You can use exemplary text on your smart board and model this word consciousness. Again, continue to teach incidental teaching of vocabulary. Use read-alouds of outstanding children's literature throughout all of the grade levels. Continue to teach word consciousness during independent reading and writing. Have a print-rich rich classroom environment where words are plastered with interesting words collected both by teacher and students. Students may um, collect words in their reader response notebook. Play with words. Scrabble is a great way to learn new definitions of words, an authentic way to motivate students. Um, you, you can also use online Scrabble games or the Scrabble apps. Use puns in your classroom to play with words. A pun is the use of a word or words that either have multiple meanings or sound like other words, and the result is humorous. Here's a couple examples of puns. Corduroy pillows are making headlines. Did you hear about the optometrist who fell into a lens grinder and made a spectacle of himself? Palindromes are another way to play with words. Palindromes are words that are spelled the same backwards and forwards. Using puns or palindromes may be um, an interesting way or an interesting warm-up to a literacy lesson. Have students take turns bringing in the warm-up. Here's an example of palindrome sentences. Here are some more websites for fostering vocabulary development. We are finished with part two of academic vocabulary. Here's a quick review for you if you'd like to take a look at this. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. If you are interested in exploring Padlet further for student collaboration, here is the website. Thank you for joining me today. Again, here is my email or my cell phone number if you do have any questions. Have a great day.